Hi, welcome to the Teachings of Mythical Stories part 4. Today we are going to talk about different characters and settings, locations in mythical stories. We are not going to cover all the possible characters that can show up in stories. I'm just going to mention a few so you can, you can get an idea how mythical stories carry the symbolic language. Folk tales and mythical stories serve as maps in our lives and if we follow uh, the instructions, uh, the steps um, in, on this map, we can reach, we can get from point A to point B, we can, uh, the hero can bring the princess back from the dragon. So first of all we are going to take a look at this map and then we'll discuss a few characters. We have to talk about, we, last time we covered the princess, we covered um, the king, we, we covered the dragon, especially the dragon, um, and, and we even explored the first step on the map, which is the call to adventure and the very first challenge, when, when, um, uh, which is self-doubt and, and receiving um, when, when others trying to pull us back and trying to convince us that don't, don't, don't go on this journey. Also talk about the helpers in the story, such as animals, that animal characters that can help. Wise men and wise old women can also be helpers. And, and of course the magic stallion, some kind of magic helper. It can be a different character, but in many, many stories it's a, it's a powerful horse that can fly. At one point in our journey we can receive this, this powerful helper. Of course, let's not forget that all the characters in the story are ourselves, one aspect of ourselves. So the dragon is within, the magic stallion is in, within. Uh, we just have to earn, we just have to explore, we just have to uh, discover where this magic stallion lives and what it needs to come alive. So yeah, that, that's what's going to happen today. We'll talk about these different characters and the map and uh, the different stages in the story. So first, let's take a look at a beautifully drawn map of a mythical story. I'm showing two maps of stories. We can see that in the center of the picture there is a tree that shows that um, the hero's journey is not horizontal but vertical. So he can go, when he faces the dragon, he can go beneath the surface and face his shadow side, his fear, and uh, as he evolves he can climb higher and higher, uh, face other challenges, meet helpers, and eventually reach the top of the tree and meet the princess and meet the sun, and there are some fairies, there are some the, the witch, there's all the, the dark deep forest where the hero might um, lose his way and then he finds the light, he finds the clearing. Joseph Campbell speaks about the different steps the hero takes throughout their journey. The first step is call to adventure, we discussed that. The second step is the refusal of the call. We already talked about it, it's the first challenge when when we question ourselves and when others question our wanting to go on this journey. Third characteristic is uh, finding a mentor. Uh, someone, some helper shows up who gives a direction or some instructions to the hero. It's very important to note that this very first helper only shows up because the hero is already carrying some characteristics of the hero so we'll see what those are because without that the helper the first helper doesn't show up this first helper is usually a wise old woman or a wise old man the first advisor in our story is a little pig he is the one who shows the direction the hero has to follow uh, to find the dragon and the princess the hero is able to hear the message of the little pig because he doesn't differentiate between inferior and superior beings. So the hero regards everyone as equal, 
So he's able to hear the message. He is able to communicate with the pig. This is a very important characteristic of our hero. According to Joseph Campbell, the four, fourth stage is crossing a threshold when the adventure really begins. So until now, the hero was just preparing. He was stepping back and forth. He received the first advice, which direction he needs to go to. He steps over a threshold, he starts the adventure. The next stage is meeting some challenges, meeting enemies. These, cha these challenges can be smaller or even bigger challenges. It's important that these, these are steps where the hero has the opportunity to evolve. So for example, it's, a, it's just a tiny challenge that like, let, let's say a wounded animal shows up and this wounded animal uh, asks for help or an old, old woman shows up and, and needs help and then then the hero has um, a decision, am I going to stop and, and stay here and help? Or, or I'm in a rush and I have to continue my journey. If the hero has the qualities, compassion, empathy, and a warm heart, then he will, will stay and help. And this is um, more of a test. They prove that they have the inner qualities that, is, that are needed to become a hero. Someone who, who is greedy, someone who is self-centered and lacks compassion and empathy, they cannot become heroes. So here I, I, I have to talk about other characters, not just a hero. In mythical stories, there is the big problem, the big, big crisis in the beginning of the story. Many times it's not the hero who will first st uh, try to go and and uh, walk this journey and bring the princess back. Many times there are one or two or three or more characters who try to go on this journey. O often uh, these are the older brothers of the hero. These characters are the uns unsuccessful characters in the story and, and so many times they fail when they meet the first challenge, let's say when they meet the wounded animal who needs help. And again, we know that uh, every character in every story are characters within. So who are these unsuccessful characters? Well, it's our uh, characteristics within, when we get lazy, when some of us let a friend down, when we present characteristics that are not hero-like, not noble. These unsuccessful characters can be selfish, can be self-centered, greedy, manipulative. They lack compassion and empathy. So right away, we see that these unsuccessful characters are also within. We can discover when um, when we find ourselves mindset that is not hero-like, we can we can uh, we can recognize these characters. We can say, oh, okay, these are the unsuc unsuccessful characters. These are the characters um, who end up going to the uh, pub instead of uh, walking the the path. It's 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 by the way, it's a, a returning motif in a in a folk tale that the first first prince the eldest one ends up going to the going to the pub and 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 drink and lose his money and he becomes a stone so in the story again he doesn't just stay and and has fun but he becomes a stone we 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 can't move there's no flow anymore because we get stuck somewhere in in some kind of behavior so addiction for example is becoming a, a stone when addicted to something and we, we can't overcome, we, we are stuck. It's amazing to take a look at our behaviors and thoughts and beliefs and choices and see uh, if they are the characteristics of the hero or the characteristics of the unsuccessful characters. When we recognize the unsuccessful behavior patterns and thought patterns and mindset patterns, we can say, oh, okay, well, this doesn't work. And then we can explore and find a hero within and, and try again. It's a new opportunity and it's always possible to explore the hero. Joseph Campbell mentions this step, the test and meeting enemies and allies. Uh, the hero is only able to meet allies 
if he overcomes these tests that I, I just mentioned. The next characteristic of the story is when the hero arrives to the, the most difficult challenge, faces the witch or the dragon. This is the time in the story when we have to look within. So we have to face our inner dragons. A good example in Star Wars when Luke Skywalker, when Yoda, Master Yoda, tells Luke Skywalker to go in that cave. As Luke enters the cave, he doesn't know what to expect, but then he, f he meets Darth Vader and they will get into a sword fight. He faces his biggest enemy. When he cuts Darth Vader's head off and the mask opens up, interestingly, it's not Darth Vader's face underneath the melting mask, but it's Luke's own face. So the story shows that our greatest enemy, our greatest fear is a character within us. It's inside us. We have to go in the dark cave, the scary cave. We have to go down and face ourselves, face our shadow side, side our greatest fear. Once we go through facing the these realms, we go uh, underneath the horizontal level and face the dragons, face the dark forest and face our inner dragons, there is a transformation. That's when the hero or ourselves, we go, we, we start going up. We discover qualities and we discover uh, our superpower. That's when the magic horse um, can show up. And let's not forget that, that the magic helper is within so it's something that we always have but we don't have access to our superpower we don't have access to this magic helper the stallion the the powerful bird or or horse as long as we don't face our shadow side as long as we don't face our fears as long as we don't recognize where we are stuck what, and what and all the things we have to overcome. The magic horse or the magic stallion symbolizes our resources, our power center, those qualities that we are not even aware that we have. This inner power, this inner quality is hidden underneath all the trauma and all the stories we've been carrying in our lives. The magic helper doesn't eat mundane food. It eats amber, fire. That shows that this quality is not a mundane quality anymore. This quality is more. This quality is a spiritual quality. It's beyond all the struggles, all the fear. There's no fear here anymore. There's the clean, the essence of who we are and the power we have. Once the hero receives this magic helper, this superpower, that's where they they go through this transformation and, and from an ordinary individual they become a more enlightened being. It's important to note that if, if we look at the first picture again, it's possible to go up go up and then fall down there the hero goes through this transformation he receives the magic horse which will just take him up to the porch of the bright sun he is welcomed by the sun and what a what an honor and he already has his magic horse so he already explored the, his superpower he is he even has a golden um, some golden hair which symbolizes that he's going towards enlightenment staying at the at the home of the the sun um, and there's a there's a mirror so he stands in front of the mirror and he looks at himself that ha huh, I have this golden hair hmm. he admires himself all of a sudden he just falls down and finds himself underneath the earth in a 
in a very dark cave where I'm slimy, muddy cave and he doesn't see anything. There's total blindness, total darkness and he has to crawl and he he, he touches frogs and snakes and uh, he, he has to find his way out. So in that story, the, the hero re reaches a stage but even there this old quality shows up uh he he starts he, he feels he feels full of himself he looks into the mirror and is like huh that that quality that just showed up when he looked into the mirror sends him back so of course uh he will he will make his way out of that dark cave he will face a dragon there again and then the horse shows up and takes him back to the next stage. So it's just so fascinating that just because we evolve and we go through self-growth, we get to a point and then we might feel that, huh, you know, like I over, I was able to overcome all these challenges and this is awesome. The hero needs to be humble. The hero needs to have the quality of openness, almost an emptiness and being always in, in, in change. The hero has a humble quality. He is compassionate, he's kind, he's helpful. He's always open. He's always trying to sense what's present. So there is a high self-awareness, a fluidity. He's not stuck in structures. Mm -hmm. He doesn't only rely on his five senses, but he's very, very much attached to his gut feeling. So he's always present and um, he has clear vision and inner freedom and takes action when it's needed. So this action is a clear headed, laser focused, calm action not some kind of reactive, not, not reaction, it's response, it's the, it's the very best response to the given situation. And the last stage in the story is when the hero returns with the princess and uh, brings his knowledge back to the ordinary uh, world and then things change, so he, he generates change around himself. He has to go go through transformation, become more enlightened, evolved person through those challenges. And then he has to come back and bring, bring these qualities back. The king hands over the crown and the kingdom. And with the princess, the hero creates a beautiful kingdom, a beautiful garden, and they live happily ever after. Thank you for joining me. I, I really hope that you found these stories fascinating. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.